Hey, what's going on, everybody? I'm excited for my next guest because I think it's he's got a lot of great information and insight into what maybe Miami can expect moving forward. It's J.D. Pakel. He's got a great YouTube channel, CFB with J.D., where he breaks down video. He did a great one recently on Josh Gaddis, and I think it's very informative. I highly re- recommend everybody for checking out. But, J.D., what, what's going on, man? How are you? And I'm doing phenomenal. I'm excited to talk some Miami football with you, man. It seems like the entire country has just been getting hit with this headline and that headline. Or they hired this coordinator. They hired this. I mean, it is it's kind of like Christmas morning down there in Coral Gables, man. So I'm fired up to talk about it. Appreciate you having me on. Yeah, there there is a lot of excitement around the country. I can kind of sense it. And I think definitely in South Florida, Miami fans are excited. And, and I think rightfully so. They're putting together staff. They're, they're going to, I think they're going to maximize their players and, and things like that. And, and people, again, people are excited about the staff and that's what we're going to get into, particularly with Josh Gaddis, offensive coordinator comes over from Michigan. Michigan had a, had a big year. JD, before we get into Gaddis though, I, I want to just maybe talk about your background real quick, if we could. Um, your football background, I, I find it to be interesting in terms of the space you're in now, but just can you uh, explain to viewers um, kind of your background and how you got into doing what you're doing with the channel and putting stuff out there with your content? Yeah, absolutely. So a little bit about me. I uh, was fortunate enough to play my college football at Cornell, played anything from wildcat quarterback to slot receiver to running back, running down, hit people on special teams. So uh, got a chance to get exposed to a lot of different positions, which I think has paid dividends to what I'm able to do now. Um, but long story short, uh, graduated there and had one year of eligibility left. And my dream was always to go play an FBS program somewhere in the Power Five. Got a chance to walk on at Baylor University in Waco, Texas, which is where I actually am now. So my career actually got cut short there. Too many concussions uh, to keep a, a long story shorter and just – Got uh, connected with someone via the SID at the time, Taylor Bryant, who I'm forever indebted to, uh, for connecting me with someone with 365 Sports uh, named Colt Barber. He just texted me and said, hey, man, want to come do a post game and just see how you like it and see how it is. And uh, that was, I guess, three years ago now. And just I've absolutely loved it and being able to share what I get excited about with other people and hopefully in turn get them a little more excited. So uh, it's been a blast and brings us to, to where we are present day. And just one of the things, you know, just watching your videos and seeing what you do, you did a, you do a great job of explaining um, essentially what people talk about or why certain things are the way they are. And, um, and definitely I'm going to drop in the, the comments below the videos where you could see exactly what JD's talking about. I know you got more stuff you're going to be doing, but, but let's talk about Gaddis um, comes over from Michigan. Like I said, successful year, big offensive year um, compared to the last two years. And you did a good breakdown on him. And um, generally speaking, and we'll get into some specifics, but what stands out to you um, kind of with, with Josh Gaddis and, and his offense, maybe with his philosophy? Yeah, so one of the things that excites me the most about Josh Gaddis, especially for the University of Miami, is the fact that he really had to evolve his scheme over his time there. And so when you talk about Michigan, when he first got there to last year when they made a college football playoff berth, two very different personnel that he was working with. And so the fact that he was able to kind of take his philosophy when he got to Michigan, which he was a little bit more of a spread zone kind of guy. I mean, you fast forward to where he is now, they were essentially a downhill power run team. And so what I love so much for him and what he's going to do for Miami is they're going to recruit well. And Josh Gaddis is going to take those ingredients and turn it into something great. He's not going to try and say, Hey, this is what we're doing. We're going to do this. Not only this, we're doing it my way. I don't care if you have this skill set. He's going to take advantage and maximize all the skill they're getting onto campus in Coral Gables. So I think being able to use his personnel, they're going to do what he wants to do, which is get guys that are fast in space. We talk about that a lot in the video, but essentially the key term for him is speed in space. And that's secondary, I guess, to maximizing the potential of their other players. And I, we're definitely going to get into the running game. I'm very excited about that, especially because of the position you played, um, have an experience there. Um, and also how it pertains to Miami. But let's start with the quarterback, the passing game, what you saw uh, on film with, with Gaddis. And then, you know, Miami's bringing back a quarterback that, that played well last year. And Tyler Van Dyke, you know, named the ACC offensive, you know, or the ACC rookie of the year, offensive rookie of the year. Um, both, both awards there uh, does well. A lot of excitement with him coming back, throws a good deep ball. With, with Gaddis's offense, um, 
what, how do you kind of see in this thing mash, uh, mesh together um, from with, with, with what Van Dyke does and with what Gaddis was is likely going to bring to the table? In the most respectful way possible, Cade McNamara overachieved in Josh Gaddis's offense a season ago. And that's not a knock on Cade McNamara. I think it speaks volumes to the guys he had around him, right? I mean, they had great running backs. So they fed those running backs. And then when it was time to do play action, they, those, those safeties crept up, hit him over the top. I think for Tyler Van Dyke, the exciting piece is, okay, I'm playing for a guy to where I am more of a quarterback that fits into what he wants to do offensively. Not that he, you know, wants to air it out 50 times a game, but Josh Gaddis would like to run some of those layered concepts, uh, be able to get the ball to their playmakers in space. And so the fact that he wasn't able to do that as much with Cade McNamara, I think you're going to see a much more wide open Miami offense than you saw from Michigan a season ago, if that makes sense. So if you're a Miami fan sitting at home, you're saying, okay, well, Cade McNamara was throwing it off play action. He was rolling out, making dink and dunk. They're still going to air it out with Tyler Van Dyke because Tyler Van excuse me, Tyler Van Dyke can do that. So they're going to make sure that they let him open it up quite a bit. I'm excited for him. You know, and also too, you know, we touched on Tyler quite a bit, but the the wide receivers, Miami's going to have to replace their wide receivers. Uh, their top two guys and Mike Harley and Charleston Rambo going on to the draft. So they have all these other guys. Um, uh, Miami fans know the names. It, it's a combination of guys. Keyshawn Smith got a lot of time last year, good speed type guy. Um, they bring in Frank Ladson from Clemson. The other names, Jacoba George, Mike Redding in the third, Romello Brinson, and a couple slot guys. And that's where I want to talk about, J.D., if you could talk about the slot guys, maybe how they could play in possibly in Josh Gaddis's offense. Xavier Restrepo got playing time last year, did well. Brashard Smith is a guy that a lot of Miami fans, especially South Florida fans, are, are excited about because of what they saw him do at the high school level. But maybe the slot receiver, J.D., how can they um, maybe utilize that or, or maybe what you saw on film with, with Coach there? Right off the bat, Restrepo is a guy I'm really excited about. I think he stands the most to gain from this new offense with Gaddis because, again, we talk about it a lot, speed in space. You're going to see Restrepo, especially anybody from that slot receiver position, probably have some quicks or able to get open and win their matchups. You're going to get a lot of slots on linebackers because of how they draw it up. So I'm anticipating a lot of in-breaking routes that are short and letting Restrepo work after the catch. And then when they want to creep up and try and, play over the top and try and try and jump those routes. I think the slot's going to be a guy that more than anything will get advantageous matchups in this. And then also, if you, if you watch that video, there's a lot of that Michigan does out of those bunch formations where you have three receivers really crowded together. You have one point man and two behind him. That's just going to confuse a lot of the secondary. And also it's going to keep from those receivers being able to get jammed off the line. So someone like Restrepo, who physical specimen, all those things, it's going to keep him from being able to be jammed up from a safety or someone who wouldn't be as good of a matchup on the line. So uh, to answer your question more directly, lots of passes that will be caught with room to run. They're going to get a lot of space and be able to work. JD, and this is going to come across as a very simple question. And, and I know you can explain it well. That's why I'm going to ask it. But, okay, we've heard this speed and space, right? Josh Gaddis, those are terms he uses. You're using it here. You're explaining it. But what exactly does that mean in terms of how will guys get freed up um, to, to essentially utilize the, the speed the best that they can? W what are some concept things that you think Gaddis will be able to do or likes to do? You touched on again with some route combinations. Um, but what exactly will that look like? What exactly does that mean in a simple form? I think in the most simplistic way possible, you are having answers for whatever that defense wants to throw at you. So if you watch that clip, the play where their, their freshman breaks in on, I think they have two dig routes going on the right side, and so they both run dig routes. Um, if that safety wanted to come down and try and jump the most inside dig route, where there's another dig route coming right behind them. And so in the most simplistic way possible, it is having a variation of options for an intelligent quarterback like Van Dyke who's going to take that next step. They're going to make sure whatever the defense wants to throw at you they're wrong. So when they're wrong, you have a multitude of other fast guys with a lot of real estate next to them. If that, does that make sense? Okay, Chris? Yeah, absolutely. Sure and, I, and I know okay, people good. are going to appreciate that. I, I got another one for you. Again, the running back, you played running back. We'll get into that. Um, is, is there something on film that excites you with a wide receiver? Either is there a certain uh, route or 
like I said, the combinations of different routes, the bunch formations that you mentioned, is there something that excites you that, that you like seeing receivers, either ways that they get open, double moves? I know you, you kind of explored something on video with, with a, kind of a trick play there. Uh, but is there something that you feel like teams are, are great at or, or when they certainly uh, exploit a certain route or, or something with their wide receivers in particular? I think one thing Gaddis did a great job of for Michigan, and I'm assuming Gaddis was the one who was getting them into this formation. Maybe McNamara was checking to it. But one thing they did a lot was a smash concept where you have a receiver on the outside and a slot receiver. And that outside receiver runs like a five-yard hitch route. Well, that slot receiver has a corner route over the top. And so, like you were talking about with the slots, I think how much they're going to be able to give the quarterback a quick picture for man coverage. I mean, they're going to have some athletes now down in Coral Cables that if you give Miami man coverage for years to come, I mean, you're going to be listening to the fight song. All right. That's just the way it's going to go for them. So, uh, to answer your question, whenever they get man coverage, they're going to have some things schemed up to, to beat those with a lot of efficiency. So I'm excited for that. So going to the running game, um, you've explained a lot there. Again, people check out the video because, you know, it's one thing to explain it through words, but you do a great job of explaining it through video. Um, and, and not just the Miami one. There's a, a lot that you're doing and pumping out there. As a running back, can you explain maybe the different, um, essentially the different running schemes that a, that a coach might try to to go with um, maybe the difference is it, and I've heard you explain it on video a little bit, but just can you explain a little bit about where Gaddis might go a certain way with, with the running game or what options he'll have and all running backs are different. They all have different styles of running. Yeah, absolutely. And I think um, what he did well last year was he had two very different backs, right? And Hassan Hask and the Blake Corum. Corum was kind of the more jittery water bug, make you miss in space kind of guy. And that's, I think, the way that Miami will trend a little more this season. That's kind of the way that college football is going, um, or at least start with that. That's kind of the bread and butter. But then he has a guy like Hassan Haskins, who it's like, man, we got to get this guy the rock. We got to make sure we're feeding him enough. Well, he's not quite as quick in space. He's not going to make that linebacker miss one-on-one as often as Corum will, but you still need him to carry the ball. So what do you, you run up a power scheme, which is essentially allowing your big boys to get behind that pulling guard and just use their momentum, use their size, and barrel forward because it's not fun to hit a 220, 230 pound man over and over and over again. And oh, by the way, you got to get past his pulling guard too. So I think we'll see more inside zone for Miami this year, but if they need to adjust and they get a guy who's, you know, playing the hot hand and he's a bigger back, they're going to feed him and do that power run scheme. If it suits his skill set. again, allowing these players to maximize what they're good at. They're not asking, a fish to to go and, and run on land. It's a fish, it swims. So they're going to make sure they get those fish in water to put a weird metaphor to it, Chris. Yeah, and definitely just with those running backs, two different guys, two different sizes. Haskin goes 6'1", 220. He ends up running for over 1,300 yards, 20 touchdowns. Uh, Miami fans would certainly love to see that. And then the backup or, or the secondary guy in quorum, 5'8", 200, goes for 950 yards, 6.6 yards to carry, 11 touchdowns. Great running game to complement it. And Miami's backs, you know, are, are a little bit different. You know, Jalen Knighton's a more of the smaller guy. Um, whereas Don Chaney Jr., if he comes back fully healthy, he's a bigger back. Thad Franklin's there. We saw a little bit of him. And then obviously Henry Parrish kind of transferred from Ole Miss, fitting in with their different, um, you know, just a different style, more a smaller guy, but certainly not small uh, by any means. But just the different styles with all three of those primary backs. Uh, JD with, with the running game, you know, touch more about Gaddis and and how much do you like that you're able to utilize different style of backs? How important is that that you can have different kinds of of backs and, and still excel with both of them? I think it's incredibly important. It's incredibly important to keep a defense guessing, not just from a pass and run standpoint, but the fact that hey, if they run the football they might go power. They might go inside zone. They might go wide zone. And to have the personnel to do it, I think is a luxury that not a lot of teams in college football have. So for Miami, being able to have the versatility within that depth chart, is going to be enormous because week to week, especially in the ACC, you're playing a number of different fronts, whether it's the personnel from Maryland, or you're going to get maybe some bigger guys at Clemson. Each week is going to call for a different scheme. And so not having to overextend your depth chart and say, Hey, we know that you're more of a back that's that's better 
slashing and, and getting out in space. We're going to have you run power this week. No, you're going to let your power guys run power. You're going to let your skill guys in the inside zone do the inside zone thing. So uh, that's paramount, and it's just another, again, having answers to what the defense wants to throw at you. The more answers you can have in today's day and age of college football, the more dangerous you're going to be, the more points you're going to score. Long gone are the days where it's three yards in a cloud of dust. you got to have multiple answers. And also maybe what did you see kind of catching the ball? You know, that's always a big for a back. Um, neither guy put up big yardage total, but Coram had 24 catches, Haskin 18. So certainly involved in the passing game. And then also how big is that to get those guys in, involved in the passing game to kind of make the offense more dynamic, essentially make the defense think a little bit more about what an offense can bring to the table? I think it just allows you to be more dynamic. Gaddis isn't going to be someone to where – if there's not a running back that's proving to be a threat vertically catching the ball, they're not going to try and drop a lot for it. I wouldn't be surprised if he says, hey, we want to have someone out of the backfield catching the ball. Let's put Restrepo back there. Let's put Strepo on that wheel with the bunch and have the bunch go one way, the wheel goes the other way. He's wide open. So I don't think he's against that by any means. To the same token, it's not going to be a thing where he forces it. So a luxury, absolutely. If you can do it, they'll find a way to do it, but it's not going to be a thing where – hey, we have to have our running back get three, four catches every week. And I think, you know, touch, going back to Burchard Smith, uh, kind of an unknown guy, flashed a little bit, but people remember him in high school once again. I'm bringing him up because you're, you're talking about utilizing guys in different spots, and Burchard is a, a guy that was this running back type that played receiver, and he moved around a little bit at Miami, but we just didn't get to see enough of him. And I, I'm sure Gaddis is going to try to maximize him if he's going to be uh, a key part of this offense moving forward. J.D., man, uh, you did a great job explaining everything. But, but I, I highly, once again, I highly re recommend everybody to check out the videos because you do a great job of, of you know, putting the words and and actually seeing exactly what you're talking about there. So definitely check out his channel, uh, CFB with, with JD. I know you got more stuff going on, but definitely thanks for jumping on here. I appreciate talking to you and uh, we'll, we'll definitely talk soon. Stay in touch. Chris, my pleasure. Appreciate you having me on. Can't wait to talk to you again soon and talk some more Miami Hurricane football, man. It's going to be a good season. I'm fired up.